the Pacific is the fastest growing region of the planet economically. And Britain has exceptionally close links to a number of the members of the Pacific Free Trade Pact, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Singapore, and so on. We're able to become a member of the Trans-Pacific Partnership under every Brexit scenario except one. We can do it as uh, members of EFTA. We could do it with a simple Canada-style free trade agreement. We could do it under checkers. We can't do it if we stay in the EU's customs union. And it is extraordinary that Britain is therefore proposing to stay in the customs union while leaving the EU. Well, of course, Mrs May's idea of a customs union is only on a temporary basis until there's a more permanent solution to the Northern Ireland border issue. She's actually said she wants to join the CPTPP eventually herself. I don't think anyone in Brussels sees the backstop as temporary. I think that the almost universal belief here is that Britain will stay permanently inside the EU's trade and tariff arrangements. And it's important to explain quite how bad that is for us. It's not just that the customs union always clobbered us uniquely as the only member state that trades more outside the EU than with the other member states. It's not just that Brussels will control 100% of our trade policy with 0% input. All of those things are bad enough, but it's even worse than that. What it means is that if, if the EU now contracts a trade agreement with an, an outside country, say with India or China, Britain would be obliged to match all of the concessions made by the EU but India or China would only have to reciprocate to the EU27, not to Britain. In other words, our economy, the fifth biggest in the world, the second biggest in the EU, would become a bargaining chip to be used by EU negotiators wholly for the benefit of the continental economies with no notional benefits to us. Now, how on earth have we ended up in a position where we're leaving the EU but proposing to keep that? That's, that's like throwing away the burger and eating the napkin. But it, it would be a problem because those WTO tariffs would kick in and for supply chains for the automotive industry, for example, components crisscross the channel several times before arriving at their final destination. So there would be a cost to UK consumers, wouldn't there? Well, I, I don't see any scenario where Britain would impose tariffs on imports from the EU. Why on earth would we want to push up prices for British consumers? Why on earth would we want to make things more expensive for our small businesses and for people on low incomes particularly struggling to buy things at the most efficient cost. Of course, the EU may not reciprocate. The EU may uh, decide to put politics before economics to, 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 to treat the act of leaving as a hostile one and impose tariffs on the UK. That would chiefly hurt it rather than us. A country that imposes tariffs always does the most damage to itself, although it may do some incidental damage to the exporters of other places. There are four members of that trade block at the moment, Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, Brunei, that haven't yet got free trade agreements with the EU. Were they to do so, would that obviate the benefits of joining the CPTPP from Britain's point of view? Well, I think, I think we can go much further than the EU is going in its free trade agreements with other countries. But look, I want there to be global free trade. I mean, I, I don't think it is a bad thing for the EU to have free trade agreements with, with other countries. On the contrary, I want the EU to prosper. I want us to have rich neighbours next door, if only because rich neighbours make good customers. So I'm, I'm all in favour of maximum free trade. But I think we can do better. Uh, instead of just doing the usual kind of EU-type free trade agreement where you agree to common standards and common regulations, I think we should be looking at the countries that are closest to us, Australia, Canada, and so on, countries which are, uh, have the same legal system, the same commercial and accountancy norms as us, and we should be looking at, at simply having complete mutual recognition so that whatever is legal in their country is automatically legal in ours and vice versa, and that, that that mutual recognition should apply to goods, to services, to professional qualifications. That's the way that you make free trade deliver for the consumer rather than for the multinational. That's the way that capitalism works for the little guy rather than for the big corporates.